where he finished up his career. Uh, then went into coaching. So he also coached at Springfield College for two years. Okay, and he's done a bunch of plays around the area. Uh, but again, a Division One guy at Winchester High School, one of my former teammates, uh, holds just about, if not the top record, right around the top in points, rebounds, assists, even block shots. Uh, just about her. Okay. So Alex had one of the best high school careers you could have, not only in Winchester, but I think Middle Tennessee as well. Just uh, great player, great coach, and uh, it's great to have him. So let's give him a big round of applause. Winchester High alum. He's the, he's the top scorer. He's number one. I'm number two. Okay. He came to speak to us. He went on to play at UNLV. He now coaches, uh, who's that team with Kevin Durant on? Thunder. The Thunder. The Thunder. He coaches with the Thunder now. Well, anyways, Brian Keith came in to speak with us, and I was fortunate enough to, to be right where you guys were, and he gave us a routine. So I saw that, and I ran with it, okay, and I worked, I got in the gym and I worked on my game. I worked on my game. So developing a routine is so important, but then you have to stick to it. The guys I grew up with in Winchester, we loved playing basketball. We had a group of maybe 20 of us, and we got in the gym, and we held each other accountable. We were out back running bleachers. Okay, we were in the gym working on our game. We weren't spending the entire summer eating slushes at the country club and the boat club. Because we wanted to win. We wanted to beat Woober. We wanted to beat Charlestown, East Boston, all those schools. So we held each other accountable. So developing a routine and sticking to it is so important. Because you'll oftentimes you'll see lectures at a camp. You'll do the workout for a couple days. If you're feeling good about yourself. Then you'll get away from it. Get away from it. Okay, so developing a routine and sticking to it is very important if you want to become better at anything, but especially basketball. Because in the game of basketball, you only need a ball and a rim. I mean, you don't even need a rim. You can, you can work on your game in your, in your parents' basement just working on your handle. And we'll, we'll show you a couple things that you can do when you don't have a basket. Okay? Um, so thank you again for having me here. I really appreciate it. We're also fortunate enough to have three guys who are going to be playing college basketball next year. Okay? In the fall, we'll be going to three of the top schools in the world. Okay? And all three of them were like you. Okay? They came to camps. They saw the lecture. They got a routine, and they stuck to it. They got a routine, they stuck to it. I have a 70-30 rule, and I think all of you should, should write it down, okay, put it in your phone. 70-30 rule. Whatever sport it might be, and especially with basketball, you should work on your craft 70% of the time, and 30% of the time play games. 70-30. Okay, because unfortunately the, the culture that we have with grassroots basketball, guys play way too many games. 
they don't get to work on their craft enough. So 70% of the time, you should work on your game. 30% of the time, you should play games. So if you're one of those guys that plays on two AAU teams and plays in a bunch of camps, you better put time aside to work on your game. Work on your game. Okay, so back to these three guys right here. I had the privilege of attempting to recruit all three of them. I must not be that good of, a, of an assistant coach because I couldn't land one of them. But I tried getting all three of them to come to Middlebury College. Try to get all three of them to come to Middlebury College. Pete, you guys know, he's been around all week, right? Winchester product. Pete Miller. He's going to Princeton. How cool is that? Give a round of applause. He works as hard as anybody I know. And he's used basketball to help position him to go to one of the greatest universities in the world. And he's going to hit the ground running once he gets there. Because he knows he hasn't arrived. Right? He's dedicated to the process. He has these long-term goals, these short-term goals, and every single day he's working towards them. Okay? This next young man, He's going to Williams College. Yeah, I don't know. That's Duncan Robinson. He's a six foot seven, six foot eight shooting guard. Playing Division Three. That just shows you, and you'll see him work out. That just shows you how competitive, how competitive it is to play college basketball. Okay, he's a six foot seven shooting guard. And Duncan, similar to Pete, works on his game every single day, gets in the weight room, does all the athletic evolution stuff, and plays a ton of basketball. He is super skilled. Super skilled. The third guy is Harry Rafferty. Harry Rafferty, who's probably similar to a lot of you guys, where he's a little undersized for the game of basketball. Right? A little undersized for the game of basketball. Do any of you guys know economics? Supply and demand, right? Supply and demand. There's a million guys that are six foot, six foot one, a step slow, trying to play college basketball. But Harry Rafferty had 30, 40 colleges coming to see him play in the open gym workouts at his school, trying to get him to come to their school. Okay, because he worked at it. He worked at it every single day. And if you don't believe me, we're about to ask them. We're going to put them on the spot here. We're going to ask them what their daily routine consisted of. Okay? They didn't waste any time. They definitely didn't waste any time. They knew what they wanted, and they got it accomplished. That's pretty cool if you ask me. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So I'll start things off by telling you about my routine. Once I got to about the sixth grade, I became best friends with the custodians here. And I had them accommodate my passion for basketball, and they would let me into here. The gym was a lot older, and it, they redid the floor after I after I got out of the home middle school. The gym was a lot older, but I would get in here about six o'clock. If homeroom was at 7.45, I would make sure I would get a 90 minute workout in with just me and the basketball. And there were days where I did not want to wake up. I promise you that. There were days where I did not want to work, work out. I was feeling a little groggy. I had a lot of homework to do. So I was up late the night before. But that didn't get in the way of my dream, because I knew what I wanted. 